Divyansh, congratulations from the team of Lukman IAS for securing All India Rank 49 in the Civil Services exam this year. So, uh, thank you, you thank are you. one of the topper in the Civil Services exam this year. So, how has been the feelings uh, uh, soon after you saw the result? Uh, um, it was a mix of shock, uh, happiness, surprise. I was very elated. I could not believe that I had scored a rank of 49 because uh, in a way I had never expected it. Uh, so uh, I mean, it, it was a mix of uh, these emotions. Yeah. All right. So uh, Divyans, tell us about your academic background. Like where do you come from and what did you learn before entering into UPSC civil services preparation? So how has been your schooling and college done? So actually, I am from Rajasthan, uh, and uh, so most of my schooling has been from Rajasthan itself. Uh, although it has, uh, uh, it, it has been in different districts. So I had uh, init the initial stages of my schooling was in Churu, uh, Churu, Rajasthan, and then uh, Savai Madhopur, then in Jaipur again, and then in Kota. So and after twelfth, uh, I actually qualified for uh, uh, IDJ, and then I joined IT Delhi, and my my branch was computer science and engineering in 2012. And after four years uh, of, a, of a very enriching experience at ID Delhi, I joined Microsoft uh, as, a, as a software developer. And thereby I worked there for 1.5 years uh, and uh, then resigned from Microsoft and then started preparing for UPSC uh, examination. All right. So which year did you enter into the preparation for civil services exam? Uh, from the, uh, you can say from the start of 2018, January 2018 was the uh, time when I started preparing for UPSC uh, for the first time. Yes. All right. So, uh, like, you are one of the topmost performer in the civil services exam this year. So, mm -hmm. uh, tell us something about how did you plan and strategize your preparation for the prelims and means exam? Uh, actually, I, so. You want to know the strategy of yeah, uh, general strategy for the general studies, prelims and means. So, how did you plan your studies? Like, you know, uh, like uh, how many hours of studies did you use to put on a regular basis? And like, what was your overall motto? Means, how did you uh, plan the things out? Like, when to prepare for the means, when to prepare for the prelims? So, I just want to know the these uh, general basic things from you. I, so I, I, I'll not say that I did something different per se from what other toppers have done and from what most of the people do. So I actually prepared for mains and prelims right from the beginning itself. And I did not make that sort of a distinction uh, between prelims and mains. Uh, first of all, I, I focused a lot on time management and, uh, and preparing a schedule for myself and sticking the, to that schedule. I think this is one of the things that I uh, spent a lot of my efforts on and, and a lot of my time, uh, time and energy on to, to stick uh, by the schedule that I used to prepare. So uh, with regards to that, I used to uh, actually set and uh, prepare a timetable for the next one month. And uh, so my timetable was not like, um, uh, between this time and that time, you need to do this. Some people actually prepare timetable uh, on the basis of time. So for example, in from nine to 12, I'll read this, from nine to 12 to uh, one, I'll read this and do that sort of a thing. So for me, that was not feasible. So I used to prepare my timetable based on work. So on day one, I need to get this much uh, amount of work done. So this was the time, my timetable uh, per se. So for example, let's say uh, on day one, I'll, I'll read uh, the, Chap president uh, chapter of Lakshmi Kant. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, in addition to it, I'll actually read one more chapter of my optional. So something or uh, the other was my uh, schedule uh, or the timetable. And uh, I, as far as I can, I used to religiously follow to this uh, timetable. Uh, 
uh, and uh, ha, and one more uh, aspect uh, that i really want to highlight is to have some amount of breaks uh, in in your timetable so for example i used to keep sunday uh, as a holiday uh, like we have in corporate offices and in government offices as well so because ultimately it will become it becomes very difficult to do the same thing again and again without uh, having any sort of break so uh, having some sort of break and having some sort of amount of time to re-energize yourself is very important and this is one of the key things that i used to include in my timetable of course if the exams are near you can actually reduce the uh, the break you can actually make it half a day but uh, always do remember to keep uh, uh, some amount of break uh, in between the timetable so for prelims i uh, actually as i said i followed these same books uh, what the toppers have suggested i actually followed the formula of having one book uh, and one subject uh, religiously uh, so nothing uh, um, i did nothing special in it and uh, i uh, for for test series coming to test series i actually I did visions test series and uh, some other test series here and there for uh, for um, for for prelims and uh, this was it so one test series usually per per year and uh, and this is it so th this was uh, for for test series and i i used to do the test series religiously uh, 30 35 tests uh, close to i think are sufficient uh, especially uh, and uh, aspirants should also make ensure that they could do the tests or that they could do the questions that they are doing again uh, uh, so it's necessary to first do your tests uh, properly and then uh, also to revise them one more time sometimes in the future so at least two uh, attempts or maybe the two revisions are uh, there the first time when you are actually attempting the test series and secondly when whenever you again find the time and by doing this your test series will become much more uh, uh, helpful uh, for prelims rather than just to do that question once and then forgetting about it so and uh, ha, yeah and lastly um uh, should also focus on the low hanging fruits that are there uh, like for example maps uh, some questions on environment uh, uh, so some some mountain ranges in india tiger reserves world heritage site biodiversity park so these are the things in which upsc asks usually asks one or two questions and these are the low hanging fruits because they don't require that much uh, of an effort so for prelims uh, it's the sort of the mixture of uh, all these three is to have, have a timetable stick with it to actually uh, pick any of the test series that are available i think all of them are good and then do it properly and thirdly uh, to have uh, uh, to actually see what the low hanging fruits are and then to prepare for it and lastly just 10 to 15 days before the prelims i i would say if someone has prepared some amount of short notes uh, um, uh, that 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 are usually very helpful so if you can prepare uh, some short notes from modern india from ancient art and culture so and you can revise them in the later uh, stages uh, of the preparation so prefer i think prelims is uh, is this i mean I, I don't think we need to uh, do more in prelims it's, it's it's sweet and simple and uh, this is usually for me that this is what uh, cuts it uh, every year so uh, i have given four prelims and i have qualified all four prelims so this is what i do each year without fail um now right. yeah now coming to mains i mean mains is a different ball game altogether it has uh, four gs papers and that too ethics is very different and then uh, uh, then it has essay as well then it has optional as well so uh, i mean we can discuss it one by one and uh, if you want to otherwise if i actually make it uh, uh, as it, if i actually try to speak it in one go it will be very long and right uh, so yeah. mm -hmm. so uh, let me ask a question related to ethics paper since you have been associated with ethics program at lukman <laughs> is Yes, so, uh, uh, tell us something about how have been your experience in writing the ethics paper in mains exam, and mm -hmm. has there been any shift in the pattern in which UPS has been asking questions in ethics paper, and how or uh, like uh, were you connected with Lukman IS, and like wo uh, what contribution do you think like S and Sari sir might have made in your preparation for ethics? Mm -hmm. So, uh, coming to ethics. Uh, see the thing was that uh, why i decided to join lukman is was that in the 2020 attempt i got really low marks in ethics so i got just 86 marks in ethics and so this was one of those areas where i really needed to improve and i also wanted to improve because i know ethics could fetch you a 
uh, great scores uh, if you attempt it properly so i was uh, so as it, it, it has already been recommended by various other uh, uh, not toppers so i actually joined the lukman is course and i knew about ansari sir before as well because i, I remember i used to see his videos on case study case study analysis that are uh, i think are already hosted on the youtube's uh, platform of lukman is so i i used to follow his case study approach in 2019 as well after seeing those videos and uh, then i decided to actually opt for the test series uh so so this was my association with lukman i guess so i had attempted a few tests i i could not uh, attempt all the eight tests because of the paucity of time but i i did attempt uh, i think three or four or maybe five tests uh, and 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 benefited from uh, it in the mains examination uh, yes and so what do you think the quality of the discussions that ansari sir takes on the uh, on case studies and on ethics uh, test papers yeah so one thing that i really like about ansari sir is that he gives a new perspective so this is usually not found i did not found it in other uh, institutes and in other teachers so uh, when i saw his videos on case studies it really gave me a pattern or an approach to uh, to attempt case studies and uh, uh, most importantly it also gave me uh, you can say specific priorities uh, per se so in a case study it's not just about the content it's also about your priority what the first step uh, needs to be is you usually the most important step and sometimes it's it's, it's not very straight forward it's usually hidden in the, all the paragraphs and meaning so we uh, as as aspirants must have that sort of an intuition so that we can actually you know extract that that priority order first and then maybe make our uh, answer according to those priorities handling them one by one so by actually interacting with ansari sir this is uh, what i uh, benefited the most is first to see the the priority of what needs to be done and then once the priority is clear then how do you actually uh, right or how do you actually address those priorities uh, so what steps needs to be taken can we also bring in district administration to resolve some cause what other option do as administrator ad administrators we have so uh, before for example uh, one of the mistakes that i used to make was that uh, i used to assume that uh, if a case study says that i am the district magistrate and uh, and other things like that so Uh, what i used to do is that i used to do all the things by myself so uh, i'll approach him i'll approach them i'll approach this and i'll approach that but again this is not how administration works I, I, administration you delegate so if i am the district administration if there is a law and order issue i i'll usually delegate it to the sp i won't go there and actually do all the things by myself so so understanding this uh, becomes important and this is not something that is usually uh, uh known to aspirants when they are preparing for upsc because they have never seen how how administration works so in that sense also uh, attempting the case studies and having some sort of priority order and a real life advice helps so that you actually make decisions very close to what happens on the ground itself not uh, just uh, you are making them theoretically all right so did you also used to prepare notes uh, on ethics like before the examination uh and uh, did you refer to the previous year toppers uh, answer scripts and did you go through the uh, previous year question of upsc uh, mains examination related to ethics mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes indeed i did prepare some amount of short notes in ethics especially on uh, ethical values or civil services values that are there some notes on probity uh, uh, also i referred to some of the toppers copies as well found if ever i found uh, something that is useful and that can be used so i used to jot it down as well so uh, so in ethics there was no not particularly a, a direct source per se so it's a mix and match of all the things so sometimes uh, uh, taking some definitions from proper topper answer key sometimes taking some definitions online sometimes actually preparing short notes uh, again uh, from toppers notes as well which they have shared on, in their telegram channels so usually i i used to do uh, this sort of an activity and for case studies i did not really prepare any sort of notes uh, as i i relied more on practicing case studies rather than actually have a uh, ha have uh, have notes on each case studies so um, i did prepare some amount of one or two pages of uh, notes uh, mainly on the framework of case studies so for example what needs to be written and what should be the order for so introduction stakeholders values dilemmas and then options and things like that so there i actually prepared one two pages of short notes and um, this was it 
all right so uh, divyansh like you have uh, qualified the civil services with with such a high rank now you are going to get a service of your choice so uh, like what is your cadder preference that you have uh, like filled uh, in the def so my cadder preference the first cadder that i've opted is rajasthan because it's the home uh, state and the second uh, is preference is maharashtra and the third is uh, up and then the fourth is karnataka and so on and that, this is what the my all right is. all right mm -hmm. so now like there are many students out there uh, they seek advice uh, they seek uh, what we say some kind of guidance from people like you who have already made it to the list so how how would you uh, like suggest a person to enter into the preparation what should they do what should they not do when they are thinking of preparing for the civil services uh, share your uh, like you know like opinion in a brief note maybe yeah so see for me actually the the most important or the, the biggest challenge has been is to make my mind mentally and to mentally fight with myself to actually continue with the preparation itself so it's been a long journey it's been 3 4 years and it's it is really difficult to keep your motivation high and and to work with with that sort of discipline and so for me it uh, so i have come in civil services for the right reasons and and i would say that the uh, for anyone who who has um or who who is thinking of preparing for civil services and who has already started for uh, civil services i would urge them to find that motivation and to find the right reasons for uh, for which they are coming to civil services if they have the right reasons if it will really help them in the uh, when they are not well when they are mentally exhausted when they are thinking of quitting the preparation so if you have the right reasons i mean it will help you in sailing through the uh, the turbulent phase uh, of the of the preparation of the life so th this has uh, been my advice to all the aspirants to find that right cause to find the right motivation and second is is to cultivate some amount of discipline and uh, this it's not a uh, um, it's not a major requirement you can cultivate discipline as you go but to have uh, that uh, sense of self confidence and sense of uh, self assurance within yourself so that uh, you can actually work for 6 to 8 hours uh, uh, per day and you have to have that sort of uh, uh, of a mind and you need to make up your mind as well to to that possibility that you are going to study for 8 hours a day uh, for the next one two years so having uh, cultivating that sort of discipline also helps a lot uh, in, in in preparing well yes all right so uh, and uh, like you come from a very prestigious organization means like you have done your engineering from iit delhi then you had joined microsoft as a software engineer so it seems like you are uh, like your academic background has been very elite right there are students who are not from uh, you know as prestigious uh, as you come from and it is naturally viewed that people who come from such prestigious and uh, you know, uh, uh, institution of national importance so uh, like the more confident and like other uh, Uh, students like who come from normal colleges they feel themselves i mean like little low like when they uh, think of like you know uh, there is a student who is from iit there is a student who is from uh, iim but the uh, people from other colleges they feel i mean like you know uh, the hesitation uh, hesitation or like there is a inner process of thought that like these students who come from such good colleges they have an edge over other you know uh, like other students so how do you see this particular uh, perspective uh see when it i always see upsc as a great leveler of sorts so i had done engineering in computer science and nowhere in upsc my knowledge has been used in the examination has been used so it's not like i have a really big advantage as compared to other people uh, coming uh, preparing for upsc and you can see uh, from my journey itself it it was not a cake walk for me it it took four attempts or three or four years of my time to actually uh, ace at this examination so i i do agree there is this sort of some amount of insecurity is there among the uh, aspirants and it's natural as well but uh, 
uh, again as i said you need to have some amount of self confidence you need to have some amount of assurance uh, within yourself that you can do it uh, and it's not like people who have come in from elite backgrounds or people who have come in from iit and i am have it uh, so good or have it much better than them uh, and you can see it from the uh, from the statistics itself so not all iitians qualify upsc i, I, I even i failed in my first attempt although i qualified in this uh, in the second attempt but still i mean it took me 4 years to get uh, where i wanted uh, to be so 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 and uh, this is it. Uh, it, it so from the day one you need to start the preparation itself uh, you should think that of course it's a, it's a difficult exam but it's not something uh, in which you are very behind uh, it's, it's it's like kehte na 19 20 wali baat hoti hai this this is just uh, more of it rather than look so saying ki bhai wo to bahut hi aage hai and hum bahut hi peeche it's not like that it's it's about close to uh, wo and one of the those things that i have really seen uh, better in people who have come in from good backgrounds is that they have that sort of confidence in, in themselves uh, up to a certain extent that uh, because they have seen people qualifying civil services from those backgrounds so uh, i would say to to cultivate their self confidence to to talk to people uh, especially uh, let's say if you are coming in from a uh, from from background that is not that prestigious you can always talk to people who who have come to that background and once you start interacting uh with them more you'll start to realize that this is not that sort of an advantage it's it's just uh, it's all in their in your mind and if you start preparing religiously from day one you you'll also qualify it's not uh, it's not something ki bhai kuch bahut zyada koi badi cheez hum logon ne kar di hai we have already i have already said uh, read eight hours given three or four years of my life and then qualified aisa to kuch nahi hai ki bahut jaldi sab kuch ho gaya hai right so uh, like then there is other uh, sort of i mean like students they have you know this uh, this thing in uh, mind that like if you enter into preparation for upsc you have to be extremely uh, what we say uh, like well in humanities like you know which is certainly not the case from uh, for people like you who come from technical backgrounds right so like here like you know there are other sets of questions as well like on one side uh there are technical people like you are uh, technical in the sense like uh, who come from other backgrounds maybe engineering medical and all so these people are acing the examination these people are qualifying more the civil services which is a humanities based examination right and other sets of people are coming from humanities background ba ma then like they have done other courses related to humanities but th- uh, their qualification percentage i mean like number of candidates who are qualifying Uh, from humanities background who come from humanities background is a uh, little lower as compared to the you know successful uh, candidates i mean from the technical background so how do you see this particular perspective oh, see as i said that uh, upsc is a great leveler so either you are coming from a humanities background or you are coming in from the engineering background you are coming in from iit local engineering college i am it does not make, make that a big of an advantage or disadvantage the the um, the reason why a number of a lot more engineers are qualifying upsc because a lot more engineers are sitting and giving the examination than the arts and the humanities uh, people maybe if you look at the statistics and as it is a great level as i said that not a lot of iits or people who have come from iims have a big advantage and it goes for people who have come in from humanities as well it's not like someone if if he or she has read history or if he or she has read his uh, political science then it means that uh, they will qualify the examination with ease because it's it's a such a diverse examination there are so many uh, things uh, that you need to read from essay ethics to uh, three gs papers and then in, in your optional so uh, making that sort of a comparison saying that a person has come in from humanities or person has come in from engineering or maybe a good background or a back background is immaterial because uh, maybe if you you have an advantage in some area but that area in itself is so small that it won't make a huge difference so let's say a, a person is good at history so what so history is just uh, what the three or four questions in one paper will come at history and that's it right so it's it's not huge you can easily outperform them even though you are coming in from a technical background or someone like me who has never read humanities uh, with uh, with interest or uh, with the uh, 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 yeah with passion before coming to upsc so 
I mean, it's it's all about talk. I mean, it, it's good to discuss it theoretically that this is better, that is better. But if you see the results, if you see the statistics, uh, um, UPS is a very great leveler. Yeah. All right. So now, since like it is a competitive examination, right? And many students are preparing uh, them. You know, they are doing studies. I have the privilege of attending coaching classes for, for GS Foundation. Subject, attending the test paper. Uh, like, uh, what do you uh, think uh, that the people who are attending the coaching classes, like, are they getting some really meaningful, uh, what we say, uh, like guidance from there, uh, which is being lacked by people? I mean, like, you know, who are doing self study. So, how how do you look into this particular, you know, co question, uh, doing self study versus getting guidance from coaching classes? Oh. <clears throat> See, I um, mean, to succeed in this examination, you need to have the necessary knowledge. Uh, it does not matter whether it comes from self-study, coaching classes, or or maybe from some other source. So what happens with self-study, and since I have self-studied as well, so in self-study, you need to have the, a person with you to provide the necessary guidance. So, for example, if you come to Lakshmi Kant, so, so if you're reading it in the first time, you won't read it from... Uh, end to end from from uh, start to the end right you you'll first pick out specific chapters some specific chapters are more important some specific chapters are not that important so if you are planning to do self study then it becomes very important that you have that sort of a necessary guidance uh, with you maybe your friend is already in the services maybe your friend is al already preparing with you so that you have the necessary sort of information what needs to be done what uh, what needs to be prepared so that you don't commit mistakes See, the only currency in this examination is time. So if you start committing mistakes, that means uh, you'll take more attempts to clear this examination. And this is something that should be avoided at all costs. So people who are doing self-study should ensure that they're not alone, that they have some sort of a guidance. Of the, now that guidance can come from every, uh, from anywhere. For people who are doing coaching, the only advantage that, that they have is that they have that necessary sort of guidance with them. And by coaching, I don't mean the paid coaching. I mean people who are relying on YouTube uh, videos, people who are actually uh, being benefited from pre free programs, and people who are already in, enrolled in a uh, in a coaching institute. By coaching, I mean any sort of guidance that is being provided by some external source uh, to you. So. Uh, with regards to coaching, it becomes helpful because they actually uh, try to help you in in prioritizing what needs to be read, in 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 clarifying your doubts, in giving you the necessary material that read, that needs to be read and that needs to be uh, or th that is important. And as I said, and and they also help in giving out uh, uh, important topics uh, to select and prepare. So. In that sense, you can see, uh, see, say, coaching uh, uh, or taking guidance from uh, from from an external source uh, as something that will help you uh, or uh, that will help you in completing the syllabus in a in a, a little bit shorter amount of time as compared to uh, when you do self study. In self study, it's easy to uh, to to mislead. It's 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 easy to you know. Uh, uh, follow things that are not relevant uh, for you per se. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is what I see. I, I think that the, both of these paths are good. There is no issue with that. But in, with coaching, what happens is that since you have external guidance, it helps. But again, you should be enrolled in 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 a good good coaching. It's not like all coaching uh, or all coaching or all coaching institutes are equal. It's it's just that uh, you need to find your source. Um, now it can be a coaching institute, it can be a YouTube channel, whatever it, it may be, it, it can be a, a paid initiative, whatever can it can be. Yeah. All right. So like there are many students like who will be seeking guidance from you. Right. Once you enter into services, or already there, there may be people who are contacting you related to some, uh, you know, guidance for preparing for the civil services. And uh, there are some students, like you know, who are struggling for years. For example, three, four years, they're preparing. They're either not getting into the list, or uh, so. Uh, how to keep oneself motivated during the examination process? Uh See, the thing is that, uh, as I've already uh, uh, spoken about this before, is that 
motivation becomes really difficult because it's such a it's such a huge grind i mean you need to actually prepare for uh, three four uh, three four years or you have already given three four years so first of all it's important to acknowledge that it's it, this is a hard exam and what you are doing is, is a hard task so you you don't have to be too harsh on yourself right first first uh, thing is this second thing is that as i said uh, if you have entered the civil services for the right reasons you'll have some amount of motivation if you if you entered civil services to help people to 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 create a better india then then that motivation in itself is a is a huge kick uh, uh, for you this, the third thing is uh, usually this lack of motivation often results from frustration as well so if you're not able to qualify in three four attempts what's the guarantee that you are going to qualify it in the next stage or in the next year as well so having talking to someone taking a guidance from a friend from from a person who has already been already been selected seeing the mistakes that you are constantly making and basically reaching out to others is a third thing that will keep you motivated because it will give you first of all a new perspective and a new direction that will that you can actually take to help you in qualifying the examination so th these are the three pillars uh, I, I would say that that must be there in uh, in in an aspirant's mind uh, to to keep himself motivated otherwise if you seek motivation in um, from things like videos photos or entry of is officers it's it's very temporary right i mean you'll be motivated for one day or two days and then all the other all the thoughts that haunt you will come back so you need motivation from sources or from areas that are much more permanent than uh, then the, these transitory uh, uh, the motivation uh, factors and i think uh, this is what is uh, important all right so uh, divyansh thank you so much for interacting with us and and thank helping you. us understand about your perspective so that like we can share it with these students who might be seeking uh, like guidance from from you know toppers who have you know done uh, like you know huge success who have uh, you know, like seen huge success in the civil services examination uh, thank you so much for interacting with us. Welcome to Lukman IAS. Study general studies with Lukman IAS for building comprehensive knowledge. GS paper 2 and 4 will be taken by S. Ansari and other papers will be covered by renowned faculties. Live classes are as effective as offline classes. The classes are highly interactive in nature. Your doubts and queries will be addressed and there will be dictation of notes. In the last 10 years, Lukman IS has set up a niche in the field of UPSC guidance.